Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shah Tajassir. I am a 20 year old second year student at Harvard College. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. How did you do it? That is the first question I get whenever anyone I meet finds out that I go to Harvard. So here's my story. Ever since I was a little kid, my parents have emphasized the importance of getting a good education. I always remember them saying that a man or a woman's greatest weapons in this life are the certificates they hold. I was constantly reminded that with education, particularly good education, people could escape poverty and forge their way into the lives they want to lead. I thus started to develop a deep love for education. This love grew from my appreciation to the powers it holds, of the powers it holds, to the more personal desire of, getting the, of wanting to get the best education I could to achieve my goals. Of course, those goals changed from year to year, sometimes several times a year. But the belief I had that education is the key never subsided. Therefore, as I grew up and started moving forward with my studies, I knew that I wanted to go to the best university I could get into and started gearing my high school career towards that goal. My developing high school studies led me to IB at Kix. I remember my first college counseling meeting was sometime during the second week of school. And during that meeting, my college counselor asked me which university I wanted to go to. I remember thinking of options that I had previously discussed with my parents, but I did not mention those options to her. Instead, I said that I would love to go to Harvard. You see, when I started IB, I had no concrete plans for my university studies. Of course, I still retained my belief in quality education and had dreams about attending some of the best universities in the world. And Harvard fit that description quite well. And I used to tell my parents, almost jokingly, that I'm going to attend Harvard someday. But after that first college counseling meeting, my dreams never truly developed to a vision until I started moving forward with my college counsel counseling sessions later in that year. It took me a whole year of IB up until about four months before university application deadlines to decide that I would actually pursue this goal. And that's when I actually started working for it. I would spend days poring over SAT books and application essays trying to perfect my application. I could have easily gotten discouraged by the required examinations and essays, but I didn't. I could have easily given up because of the extremely, extremely low chances of success, but I didn't. And so after going through the painful process that is applying to university, I managed to achieve my goal of getting accepted to Harvard University. Although it took a great deal of hard work and perseverance, in the end, all it really took me to change my goals to reality was the simple act of trying applying. My life right now could have been completely different had I decided to not go through with this and give up. After getting accepted to Harvard, I began to notice how people reacted to this piece of news. Before hearing my story, and sometimes even after hearing my story, people got this idea of the type of person I am. I am a Sudanese student attending one of the best universities, if not the best university in the world. And so, I must be a genius. It seemed that all of a sudden, overnight, I went from being my old normal self to this new extraordinary out of this world person. People could not believe that I received my education in Sudan. How did you do it? Parents began asking me for advice for their kids and seemed displeased when I mentioned that all it really took me was hard work and just trying. Some parents even wanted to transfer their kids to my old school to get some of that magic rubbed off on them. It seemed like everyone wanted their child to become extraordinary like, like I, I am. And I suddenly became the go-to mentor. But, and that frustrated me. I was still my old normal self, but people were treating me differently. 
As a result of my personal experience, I began to notice how successful people in general in Sudan are treated like they're extraordinary, like they're exceptional. And this is where the idea of portraying success stories as unachievable comes in. Being in Sudan, so many things prevent us from succeeding in life because setting a goal and actually going about achieving that goal against the obstacles that have been put in our way by virtue of being Sudanese and living in Sudan seems impossible. Using education as an example, most universities abroad do not accept our 11-year formal system of education. Standardized tests that, that are required for acceptance to, to most universities abroad are only um, provided in limited centers for large sums of money. Um, our culture itself does not support education abroad, particularly for girls. And of course, financing the actual studies um, is a problem in and of itself. We do not have financial um, support readily available to us and are mostly unaware of scholar international scholarship opportunities. And that only applies to education. Now imagine with me the type of obstacles that other people face for different things. That's why we tend, that is why we tend to associate impossible standards with those who do actually succeed. So much potential in Sudan is lost, to the, lost due to this wrong way of thinking, this toxic way of thinking. I witnessed many brilliant students give up on their application and lose their drive because as soon as they start the process, it all seems overwhelming. Whether it's the financial aspect of education, the actual application, or the, sta or the required examinations, something always seems to get in the way. It feels like no actual human being unless they are out of this world, could complete this process. Success has begun to seem more distant than ever, when all it really takes is one thing, trying, actually doing. And that is why we need to stop mythicizing it. If we start portraying success as something that is within the reach for everybody, then we will have more successful people to be proud of in Sudan. Thanks. Before applying to Harvard, I only heard tales of Sudanese students who have successfully completed what I was hoping to achieve. I heard so many justifications as to why these people were successful, and they all revolved around the same idea, that they were exceptional, that they were different. And for a while, that kind of stopped me from trying to go after my goals, because I didn't think, I didn't believe that I was different or exceptional like they are. I stand before you today as proof that that is not the case. These people are not superhuman. I am not superhuman. When I applied to university, I had about a 6% chance of getting accepted. Do you know what my chances would have been had I not applied? Zero. I ended up being part of that 6%. And if I had let my fear stop me, I wouldn't have. Instead, I felt like my goals were achievable, and so I went after them. I hope that what I have shared with you today helps you see that anything is possible. Success comes with hard work and perseverance. It does not need superpowers. It is within reach if we stay motivated and focused, if we stop mythicizing it and refuse to let the obstacles that have been put in our way stop us. Do not think that you are not exceptional enough or special enough. Do not think that those before you have something that you did not have. And most importantly, do not be afraid to go after what you really want, even if it means taking a road that nobody has ever taken before. The first step to anything is actually doing, trying. So apply to that university people told you you won't get accepted to. Go after that opportunity you, don't th you didn't think that you could get. <laughs> All you need to do to succeed is believe in yourself, do the work, and do not let anything discourage you. Thank you.